Greetings. Thanks, everybody. All right. I've got an, this is what I'm going to present to you today is what I've learned over 27 years. It's simple. It makes sense. It, you put it into action over time to transform your life. I first got wind of really the, all of this information. I was very, very lucky, got into raw foods in 1994. And I was right down the road from the Price Pottinger Nutrition Foundation right there in San Diego. So they had a little office. I mean, it was really more than an office. It was like a library right there in Mission Gore. It wasn't Mission Gore, Mission Valley. And you could walk in there. And I actually met my first assistant there, actually, Diane Onstad. And you could, you could go in there and just have peruse the books. And they had the most amazing collection of books. In fact, I've been very envious of that collection and have been going through my own collection that was doing that last night till about five or six in the morning of raw food books, superfood books, the old timer stuff, stuff written in the 1850s, stuff written over 120 years ago, just a phenomenal collection of stuff. I found one of my favorite little booklets, which is fruitarian diet and physical rejuvenation last night. That was really great. Anyway, when I started there, I got into parasitology. I was uh, able to tap into Hannah Kruger's information. I got into Herbert Shelton and natural hygiene and started looking into, okay, what's the, what's the broader spectrum? What's going on with indigenous diets? What's going on in the Amazon? And eventually worked my way into the herbalism of the Amazon and the herbalism of Taoism and the herbalism of Ayurveda and the herbalism of Africa and the herbalism of ancient Europe and the herbalism of North America and all of those things. So I'm going to, basically bring that all together in a cohesive way, essentially like a book in the next 90 minutes. And that will be a, a great strategy. It'll be a great way to, to help you shortcut. There's a strategy to help you shortcut the learning curve because it took me all these years, 27 years to learn all this stuff and then put it into action. So let's just get to step one. And this is something that, again, back in the Price Pottinger Nutrition Foundation there in San Diego in Mission Valley, they had Dr. Jensen's books, Dr. Bernard Jensen. And his whole piece on bowel cleansing eventually got me into doing a colonic. I went to see, oh, what was her name? Oh, she had a book out too. She was in San Diego. It's right on the tip of my tongue. And I went to get a colonic with her. It was my first, Milan Chessman, that was her name. And um, I went to get my first colonic way back then in 1994. And that started me out into bowel cleansing. Now, th this, this is the bottom of the barrel. This is the root chakra. This is the bathtub plug. And if we don't pull that plug out and drain all that water out and, and go through that beginning of that detoxification cycle, all the other stuff we throw on top will be less than ideally effective. That's such an important piece. I, I really have to emphasize that tremendously is that if you don't do the bowel cleansing, the other stuff, it just doesn't make as much sense. Now you're going to go, wait a second. I, I've never done a colonic. Wait. It's, a, it's exit only. Hold on a second. Um, what about, I, I can't do an enema. And see, all of these things are uh, on the assumption, and it's an absurd assumption, that your body is 100% efficient at eliminating waste, right? So, for example, the Essene Gospels, which also I ran into way back then in uh, the Price Pottinger Nutrition Foundation, eventually sold many thousands, tens of thousands probably of those books, from the from Edmund Bordeaux's AK. And I think it was in the first book, actually, the Essene Gospel of Peace, book one, he talks about in there, um, Jesus in, instructing the his disciples to clean their hinder parts, basically clean their bowels out. Now, again, everyone goes, no, 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 it's exit only, it's exit only. And again, we're on this assumption that the body's 100% efficient. Nothing in nature is 100% efficient. There isn't anything in the world that's 100% efficient. And so the research on aging, to my mind, is, is conclusive. And I know this from the charcoal research. The more you take activated charcoal in your lifetime, especially any mammal, and actually any reptile, pretty much any, even plants, if you plant the tree with, with charcoal, it'll live longer. They all live longer and astoundingly longer. In fact, activated charcoal is the number one longevity substance, according to science, ever. You never heard that, I bet. Um, but what does that tell us? I want to get to the point of what that's telling us. It's telling us that really the, th the theory that metabolic problems in detoxification is the actual cause of aging. And it's the actual cause of us getting out of here early and inflammation and goes on and on and on and on. Basically bathing in your own waste. Again, you know, the bowel cleanse, you know, no, I have four bowel movements a day. Let me tell you something. I just did a 21 day cleanse. 
I just did a seven day water fast. I ended the water fast by driving all the way from Austin to the Houston area and doing a colonic. I was doing enemas every day, include coffee enemas, all kinds of um, enemas every day, all the way through that water fast. I go and do the colonic. I could not believe actually what came out of me. Now, this is years and years. I've done hundreds of colonics. I've been doing this for years. I've been doing this 27 years. I couldn't believe it, actually. I was like, my God, I, I, what? This is crazy. So I know there's the neuro neurosis that's like, oh, no, 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 exit only. Oh, no, 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 no. My body gets a waste out. Oh, no, no, no. I have three bowel moons a day. Oh, no, no, no. Two bowel moons a day. It's not enough. You're, you're backing up in your own waste inevitably. That is the reality. And I know it's a harsh one to take for some people. Some people go, yeah, it's obvious, of course. Um, but for other people, they just caught up in this thing. I'm like, no, 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 I'm eliminating every day. I eliminated every day when I was on that water fast. I did 21, I did 14 days of cleansing and 21 days leading up to that third colonic on that cleanse. I couldn't believe it. After all these years, more and more stuff coming out. I've had incidences like in 2020, I did five water fasts. And on one of them on day, it was late in the, it might've been day four. I think it was day four in the water fast. There was three of us on that particular one. We ended up going eight days on that particular water fast. And uh, on one of those on day four, I went to the colon, I went to get a colonic and this woman who's doing the colonic, she's like, you're not going anywhere. We're getting this all out. 90 minutes of stuff coming out. 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes. I'm, it's not like I'm eating a lot of food. It's not, I mean, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. It's not like I'm, I have, you know, it's, I've been six foot, 200 pounds for 20 years. It's crazy. So this is just showing us that it's backed up waste is the number one step to developing invincible immunity. Okay. So I'll come back to it and I'll harp on it again and again and again. Um, because it's such an important tool. Now, once we pull the black bathtub plug out, now that can be done in several ways. One is, yes, you could do the colonics and enemas. Maybe you want to start with enemas and just get into it slowly. I'd recommend doing those enemas in a shower or in a bathtub. I'm telling you by experience. But once we, or, or maybe you're going to do something that's a really good laxative for you. Like, for example, here's my aloe vera. It's in the other room. I like aloe vera. Aloe vera is an amazing laxative for me. I absolutely love aloe vera as a laxative for me personally. So I'll, I'll fillet out the gel, just like you fillet a fish, right? I don't eat fish, but you would fillet the skin off. And that inner gel, you just throw in a blender and you blend it with orange juice or what your favorite things are your favorite blended stuff. And you just drink that. It has really no taste. If you blend it into a smoothie, you won't really taste the aloe, but it can have a very strong laxative effect on you. So we're going to work it both ways. We're going to open up the, we're going to pull the plug out and we're going to get some laxative type of material in. not every day, but when we're doing cleansing. And I've recommended, I talked with, uh, you probably saw that talk with Dr. Cousins and Dr. Pai, especially Dr. Cousins. We're really into cleansing and we were into cleansing for a year. I really recommend that. Now, if you're a newbie, do two a year because, you know, you're new and you got to get used to it. But if you're really, if you've been at it a long time like I have, it's four times a year. And that's what I need at age 50 to keep the inflammation down. I mean, just driving the other day, four hours, when I first got on that call with uh, Dr. Pai and, and uh, Dr. Cousins, I was inflamed just from sitting for four hours. It's not like when you're 28 years old or 23 years old. It takes an hour or two to finally like de-inflame from just sitting and, and that's how long it took actually after that drive. You know, imagine the day before that I was doing 15 hours of driving. So these things catch up on you and your body's not as, as responsive as it was when you're 21 or 28 or 32 or 33 when you're 50. And then I'm sure when we get to 60 and 70, it's less responsive again. So you have to keep working on these things and cleansing is a way for me to reset. And that's what I want to recommend for you is a way for you to reset, get back to your core self, who you really are, and then reset for the next three months and then boom, then another cleanse comes up and then you reset again and then another cleanse comes up. So that first step is getting the waste out essentially. Okay. Now it could be enemas, colonics. It could just be taking in really good laxatives for you. I like Senna a lot as Senna tea. I would never recommend having Senna every day or using Senna only if you have to use, just use that to you to have a bowel movement every day, but to use it for two weeks, great, right. To get the waste out. Number two, that now we're all, all to number two. The second step is we've got to actually get the ring sponge out. We got to wring the sponge out. We're actually just a whole series of tubes and fibers and sponges. I mean, the whole body, human body is just a series of filters. And we've got to squeeze the tissue out. 
Now that comes from walking. That comes from yoga. That comes from getting upside down. It comes from doing hot and cold. This morning I did a cold shower. I really recommend that you do a cold shower if you can. I've got a pool in the back here. I'm really lucky in this place that we have a pool here. So I can get in there in the middle of the night and do a nice little cold dip. And this hot, cold expansion contraction, ring, 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 ring the tissue out, is how we move the toxins from the tissue, from the lymph, from the cellular environment, from the muscle environment, from the organ environment into the intestines, right? So basically you have your blood system is taking nutrients and goodies into your lymphatic system, which surrounds all of your cells. And then the lymphatic system also is a drainage system, which really usually gets called the lymph system, but it's really the lymph drainage system. And that drains into your colon. And then that's how the waste can come out. That's why you can be doing a cleanse for 21 days and stuff still keeps coming out because it's your lymphatic system draining. In fact, what comes out of you is brown. If it's brown, flush it down. Why is it brown? Why is it brown? Many, many people don't know. It's stercubilins gives it the brown color. What's that? That's broken down. You ready for it? Here it comes. It's broken hemoglobin. The reason why what comes out of you is brown is because you're sloughing off dead cells, blood cells. What gives the poop a brown color is stercubilins. Look it up. Uh, which is broken down hemoglobin. So it breaks down from a red to a brown, right? It decomposes if you're following the logic there. <laughs> that means that your blood system is actually delivering waste into your lymphatic system, which is showing up in your colon. Isn't that interesting? Now we've got to squish our lymphatic system. That means deep breathing. That means getting upside down. That means the yoga. That means walking. That means swimming. That means getting coming out of a sauna, going into cold, back into hot. For years doing hot colds, I just now do colds just directly because I got used to it, right? So I don't need the, I can go directly into a cold ocean without having to come, you know, come out of a sauna or anything because I've been doing it for a while. But if you're new to this, you, you really need to build up on that, which is it's like easier to get into the cold water when you're really, really hot in a sauna. And then eventually you get past that stage and you're like, oh, the ice is melted. Let's just get in right now because you know the feeling you get after it is worth it. That's why I keep doing this stuff. And uh, when Wim Hof came along, we were so happy to see that because he popularized it. But that's something that I've been on to for over 25 years, the hot colds. We used to actually every day in my office when I was living in San Diego, we would go down to the beach, even in the middle of winter and get in the ocean. And that was so great because immediately freezing cold clears off your whole energy body grounds you electrically grounds you and you forget just like that the days work you forget all the little toil and troubles that are happening upstairs that wringing out the tissue also means body work and in particular deep tissue body work now any injury that somebody has eventually to fully heal that injury we have to get into the injury and actually create blood flow we have to move the tissue around and allow some oxygen and blood to get into that tissue, whatever the injury is. So if you have an injury and you're like, oh, no, 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 don't touch it. Not a good idea. You're going to have to eventually let people touch it. You're going to have to let, eventually let people get in there and move the tissue around. In fact, a massage, a good massage, especially deep tissue massage, is really helping us sponge the tissue out, right? Isn't that what it's all about? It's about sp sponging, wringing, squishing expanding the tissue so you can detoxify. Now that brings us to number three, which is very important, which is right diet, right? Right diet is going to control, are you inflamed or not? When I look at people my age, they're inflamed. I get why. I mean, I get inflamed just from sitting in a car. I get inflamed just from eating food, right? I can tell the difference because of all the years I've been doing this. I'm like, whoa, even eating any food, I'm getting some inflammation crazy what happens when you age i'm an Essene, so some of you know what who the essenes are remember i was teaching the essene gospels of peace the essenes battled inflammation they didn't have great things like i've got dr pie's bosmeric which i love this product you know you guys have heard dr pie speak and him and i spoke together they didn't have something like this so how'd they do it well they had to do it the old-fashioned way which is they fasted which really works and that's why i love fasting so much because your system de-inflames, you get back to your youth again. You're like, yeah, we're rocking it again. Now, the Essenes had a little system, so I want to give that to you, which is really cool. The Essenes recommended 
fasting for each year of your life. So I'm 50. So I've got to fast 50 days this year. Now I'm going to give myself a little break, bit of a break. We're not living in a scene times got you know things to do and businesses to run and people to meet and places to go. So I count my liquid diet days as fasting. And and this year I will hit 50. I'll hit 50 days of liquid diet and water fasting. Um, usually I do like seven day liquid diet and then seven day water fast. So I'm, last year I did a seven day liquid diet and eight day water fast a few times. You know, that's the kind of thing that happens when you're really into cleansing. But eventually when you add up all the cleansing, I mean, we did five water fasts last year. It adds up, it stacks up. And then if you add in, yeah, actually I did, yeah, last year I, I hit the numbers on, in 2020 um, and, and made the Essene fasting list. And that's what you got to really think about. As you age, you, you can't get away with this stuff anymore. If you've never fasted before, maybe join me on a fast down the road. We do one and we're doing the next one in June, always at the change of seasons. If you're wondering like, Hey, who's doing a fast, who's leading a fast at the change of the seasons, I'm always doing it and always leading groups. And we usually have about a thousand people all over the world. So it's a great place to meet new people, by the way, and, uh, and get people who are like-minded all together. And it's really fun. We have a really good time. I'm going to say something about this. This is true of all diet, all health, everything. And that is together, together is better. Together is better. It's easier when you're doing it with other people. It's easier when other people are into what you're doing. You may be in a situation where you've got a husband, wife, significant other, brother, sister, child, son, daughter, who's in alignment with you and you're, you're doing it together and it's just easy. But you may be in a situation where they're not in alignment with you and it's a lot harder. But with the online community, you can, they're right there just every day on your phone. Boom, I got my phone and there's my online community and I can, and by the way, notice how, see how I hold my phone? I don't hold my phone ever. My phone is separated from my hand because I don't want to be, get this or this, or I can set my phone up here and I don't have to touch it. It just stands there. And this is important to understand is that we also have certain habits that we develop. We'll get there in a minute that can be harming our health actually. And one of them is this cr crouched over on the phone story and also have, being in circuit with that phone where you're constantly touching it all day. I don't know about you, but my hands hurt years ago. I, was, I had to get off that plan. Like my hands are hurting. I got to get on to something else and worked on that system. At any rate, the right diet is going to determine how you're feeling every day. I mean, if you eat too much, you know how terrible you feel. You know what happens with eat too much eating. You know what happens when you have um, too little food and when you get low low blood sugar, and all of a sudden you're 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 spacing out. And if we're properly nourished detoxified of heavy metals and parasites. We'll get there on the next piece. And we have worked on cleansing and fasting. Eventually you can start to feel into, oh, okay, I can, I know how to keep my blood sugar stable without having to eat too much when I'm not cleansing, right? Because a lot of times when somebody goes eight hours and they're out hustling, like yesterday, I was out hustling, 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 well, I went many hours without any food. Eventually you start to go, my blood sugar is low, you know, and, and you can crash. How do we keep our blood sugar stable even in that situation? That comes from cleansing and detoxifying your body and then working on the cleansing over time, you'll get better at it. And this is another important point, very important. It's a theme for the whole thing, which is, slowly is holy slowly is holy you don't get too crazy too too quick right you're like oh my god he said colonics let's do 15 colonics somebody said, I said oh 15 years somebody put there just do 15 colonics tomorrow no just slowly is holy go slow with this stuff if you're new to it you it's like anything like if i was new to playing ping pong i can't suddenly be in the championship rounds i've got to go slowly and i got to learn the basics and the basics happen step by step by step and you get better at it. I've got people in my inner circle who've done five cleanses, maybe six cleanses with us now, just by being a part of my inner circle where they went from never having done a single day of liquid diet, never having done a single day of water fasting, never having done a single day of plant-based diet to being literally experts in a year and a half. It takes about that long, maybe two years. Okay, so that right diet, what's there? Well, chicken, there's no fiber. Fish, there's no fiber. Dairy, cheese, milk, there's no fiber. Eggs, there's no fiber. Whenever you have any of that stuff, you've got to have a lot of fiber. Where's fiber plant? Where's fiber coming from? Fiber is always in plants. It's the structural integrity of the plant. Like what's holding up lettuce? What's holding up kale? What's holding up spinach? It's the fiber. 
So fiber is a really big part of plant-based diet. And this is why like, okay, hey, I like fruit. I've got a bunch of fruits here. There's some oranges, right? And I love having oranges and oranges is one of my favorite trees to grow. Unfortunately here in Texas with the snow apocalypse that we had this winter, we lost all the citrus dead. Boom. Didn't make it unbelievable in the backyard, old grapefruit tree, goner, old lemon tree gone. So we got wiped out in that snow apocalypse, really a bummer. Um, but I will get back to growing citrus yet again. So you got to pick your favorites and the fruits for sure, but you can't just live on fruit, too much sugar, not enough fiber, right, to move some of the other stuff through. And this right here, yes, it's wonderful, but it's an ego expression of the plant. So people who eat a lot of fruit tend to become egoic. Just a little excellent little thing on that. It's good in a certain amount. Let's say somebody doesn't have a strong enough ego. They don't have enough strong enough eye identification. They don't have enough, they don't have strong enough individuality. Feed them a bunch of fruit, right? Different foods have different effects on people. And when somebody is eating, for example, food that's been death, pain, fire, and destruction, then they start to be negative and they start to be paranoid and they start to have all of that stuff. And they're not really a happy person because what they're eating is not happy. Very related. In fact, this is the, the message probably of my last 27 years of my career is if you eat terrible, you're going to feel terrible. You're going to look terrible. You're going to have terrible results and uh, your life's going to be other than excellent. If you eat well, then you have chances of you're basically stacking the odds in your favor to have an excellent outcome. Okay. So that's kind of how it works. We're always trying to stack up to have an excellent outcome by stacking the odds in our favor. That's what we're doing here. The bowel cleansing, first step, tissue, ring that tissue out, the exercise, the yoga, that kind of stuff, hot cold, that piece. Then now we got to get on the right diet, which always means less. It always means less. It doesn't matter what age you are. The best food for you is less food. Um, we, there's, I mean, I, you can't, I can't believe how little I eat now compared to what I ate, say 10 years ago. That's another thing with age. You can't get away with it anymore. It's crazy. I mean, I eat one meal. I'm like inflamed. It's like, this is just a salad. Like what the heck? But that's just how it is because ultimately when you're constructed, your body's constructed. You're not 18 years old anymore. Maybe some of you are. I hope you are. Geez, if you're 18 years old and you're on this call, that'd be fantastic. I hope you are. But, you know, most of us are 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and we, you just can't get away with it anymore. So we need to learn to go with less. This is a really good way to go with less, by the way. Eat an orange, go another two or three hours. Eat another piece of fruit, go another two or three hours. So you skate along the day with very little calories. And then when you have to have that meal, you know, your body's ready for it. You're hungry, actually. I found with, with doing a lot of cleansing and all this, almost never am I hungry, really. You know, that's another thing. You probably had similar experiences where, you know, I only get really hungry when I do very, very intense physical work. Even then, it's got to be like four hours of physical work. Let's go to the next step. So the right diet, plant-based diet, organic diet. Get as much of the goodies in as you can and the baddies keep them out. You know what those bad things are. You know the stuff that inflames you up. You know the stuff that irritates your system. Having a stomach ache, by the way, is really a downer. It's really a downer. A stomach ache is the worst thing ever. I mean, I, I never have a stomach ache. And by the way, the instant cure to the stomach ache is activated charcoal. So that brings us to step four which is the right supplementation, herbal strategy, and herbalism in general. As you age and as time goes on, see in the beginning, it's, oh, medicine is your food, or sorry, food is your medicine, right? What's the phrase? It goes, let food be your medicine, but it's also another part, and let medicine be your food. It's both. Let me say that again, right? What's the famous dictum? Let food be your medicine, and let medicine be your food. It's both. They're both together. What does that mean? Let food be your medicine. Okay, I get what that means, right? That makes sense because I want my food to be my medicine. I want to make sure I have gender turmeric and the things that you like or, you know, I love, I'm drinking, this is chaga tea right here. I love that. But ultimately, let medicine be your food means that herbalism has to become a part of your diet. It has to become a part of your diet. And you start where you, you understand. Like, for example, people are like, you mean oregano? Yeah, but no. You mean rosemary? Yeah, but no. You mean uh, marjoram? Yeah, but no. Those are all great herbs, but they're not tonic herbs. So let's break down the herbalism step four a little bit. One is 
we could have the right type of supplementation in there and the right types of um, nutriment to break, to get the heavy metals out. So that's step one, actually. And one of the most important things to detoxify for heavy metals, if you're doing all the other steps, is just simple activated charcoal, activated coconut charcoal. Activated coconut charcoal is the safest, simplest detoxification substance in the world. It's so safe that you can give to children. It's so safe you can give to newborn babies. It's so safe you can give to grandma who's 90, any age. And that's why I love it so much is because it's kind of a universal medicine. It's a universe. It's very simple. And it's just charcoal. Why is charcoal so important? Well, charcoal just symbolically represents transformation, right? It's transformed wood. It symbolically represents transformation. In the Icelandic sagas, they have an interesting archetype and it's called the coal biter. The coal biter is the child in the family in the Arctic up there in Iceland and in Scandinavia where it's freezing. Everybody's like sleep and terrible weather every day, gnarly, intense winters. There's always a child in the family. It's like the runt of the litter. It's like, I, I'm not going out there. It's freezing out there. I'm not going to go out there and herd the sheep. It's freezing. I'm not getting on that boat and going fishing. It's freezing out there. Wind, rain, sleet, snow, ice, etc. So that person, that child was given the job of tending the home fire, right? Because you always had a fire burning in the house, keep things warm. So when people came in from whatever they were doing, gathering, fishing, whatever the survival strategies were back then, getting lumber, collecting stuff on the beach to survive on. And whenever they got back home, they'd want a warm house. So that kid from age seven to 14 would tend the home fire and would consume at the, this is in Scandinavian mythology. This is in the Icelandic sagas would consume bits of charcoal, usually birch and willow charcoal at the edge of that fire. And that birch and willow charcoal would eventually transform that child. In fact, send that child through a startling metamorphosis. And that child would become the most important person in the family because they would become the toughest. They could handle the wind, rain, sleet, snow, ice better than anybody. They would be able to get up early and get out early and get back late. That person was called the coal biter or the coal eater or the charcoal eater. This is in Scandinavian mythology. No kidding. And that means that if you think you're, oh, I'm not strong enough. I'm too weak. Oh my God, I've got heavy metal poisoning. What am I going to do? Charcoal can transform your life. Absolutely transform your life. And it's my favorite actual personal supplement. And I finally just got home. So I'm actually glad to be back with it because I was out of it on my travels and I run out of it quick because I'm not only consuming it myself, I'll start out with 500 milligrams a day and then do more. I'd sometimes I'll do 2,500 milligrams a day. I don't recommend you do that. Um, you got to start out small, start with 500 milligrams. Um, with, with kids, 250 milligrams, but you can put it into water. You can put it into lemonade. It has no taste. So it can go into anything. Um, you got a, a baby with that's colicky, put a little bit of charcoal in the water and have the baby drink it. It's amazing like that. So as you get it into your body, what ends up happening is you start to find out that it's a, it's a consistency question. Like, do, are you doing it every day? Cause if you are over long periods of time, months, you will eventually cause the draw, the pull, boom, 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 to get the metals out of your system in a way that's easy and gentle, rather than going through some crazy thing, like I'm going to do this heavy metal detox, I'm going to get injected with DMSP and DMSA and do these sulfur things and do this other stuff and hot colds and all that other stuff. Not that that's bad, but you know, everyday life, like we're being exposed to heavy metals every day. And we're just driving down the road and breathing in brake dust. It's all over the place. So we have to have a daily system to detoxify. And that's where the activated charcoal comes in, usually in the morning. That works best for me. You could also do it at night. Now, if you're on medication, let's say you're on thyroid medication, you can't do activated charcoal at the same time as the medication because the charcoal will neutralize the medication. Hospitals recommend two hours apart. So let's say you're on thyroid medication, you take the thyroid medication, hospitals say two hours. I recommend four hours because there are certain circumstances where the, you know, you're, you're running around, you're sitting or something and the charcoal really doesn't digest until three or four hours later. So you may want to wait four hours before having the medication, or let's say you're doing consistently 
do a thyroid medication in the morning, you're going to consistently do the charcoal at night. And actually, it's going to make your medication work better if you do both in the same day, because there's a lot of byproducts to any medication that are toxic to the body. And we need to clean it up. And the way that charcoal does that is it filters it off through your through a process called interstitial dialysis. That's the name of it. Isn't that an interesting term? Interstitial dialysis. What does that mean? It means that charcoal, as it's being digested through your system, acts as a filter. It acts as an extra filter. I mean, your kidneys are a filter. Your liver is a filter. Your spleen is a filter. They're all filled. All these detox organs are all filters. How about having an extra filter? You can have one and it's called charcoal. So I try to get that extra filtration mechanism in there. It, it helps with autophagy, which means it helps with the detox process. So if you're fasting on water and you take charcoal, there's no calories in charcoal. There's nothing that's going to stimulate any blood sugar whatsoever, but it does accentuate and accelerate autophagy. So if you're in a water fast, you've been in for days and you're like, I want to accelerate it. Now it's been four days. What can I do to help get more out or detoxify better? You can put in the, the activated charcoal at that time, or you could just have it in as part of your daily routine. I recommend daily routine. Charcoal is a tonic substance. And in this category, this fourth category, I do want to mention that there are tonic substances. What does that mean? That's things you can do daily. Now you can't do oregano daily. You can't do onions daily. You can't do garlic daily. Finally, your body's going to go, we've had enough. We're good. That's a, we're good. You know, do something different. Or your friends, colleagues, loved ones are going to say, dude, you have a, too much garlic. Like stop. Right. Those are not tonic substances, but activated charcoal is a tonic substance. Chaga tea is a tonic substance. Rishi mushroom is a tonic substance, and there's many of them out there. We call this, look, before we get it too far into this, we have that supplement regime, which is really, I think, activated charcoal is the most important. The, it will go to the next step, the next piece of it. We call those um, herbs that we can take every day tonic herbs or super herbs. I'll get there in a second. I want to mention one more thing. With the charcoal, we're working on the heavy metals and we're working on the toxins from the environment. There's just, we're bathed in it. It's crazy how much toxin we're breathing in just on a highway. It's, it's unbelievable. We take it for granted. We think, oh, no, no, this is normal. This is not normal. We're, there's no, there wasn't anything going on like this 150 years ago. It's not normal at all. And so we have to have something there that's kind of giving us peace of mind that, hey, we're working on detoxifying our body and extending our longevity. Because again, in my research, nothing beats activated charcoal in longevity. Let me give you some numbers on that. Activated charcoal is known to increase the lifespan of mammals in over 75 years of scientific research by factors as high as 20%, even up as high as 47%. Now, let me tell you what that means because you're like, okay, good. That sounds good. It's 20%, 47%. Okay, that's great. But what does that actually mean? Well, to my mind, when I look at a human being, I think we're supposed to get 100 years. If we lived in an ideal situation, we ate right, we did the right things, we had the right exercise, we were walking you know, through the mountains every day, we should get 100 years out of this life. We didn't have the stressors and the chaos of television media, right? Because I think now, by the way, you probably know that the media is just a fear machine, right? Then the television is a fear machine. So it's stressful. If you want to have a less, less stress in your life, turn the TV off or get rid of it. I got rid of televisions over 30 years ago. So I'd recommend that. But at any rate, the research on charcoal indicates that it can outperform any single food, any single herb, any single supplement by great factors. For example, resveratrol is known to extend life. It extends life on average in mammals about seven and a half percent. That's really good, but that's not 20%. Olive oil. Olive oil is an extraordinary longevity substance. My Mediterranean diet people know that. We've probably, you've probably heard that before. How much does it extend life in mammals? Generally between nine and 18%. That's the highest of anything I know, by the way, just so you know that in the research I've been going through, I don't know anything that extends life. That's a food like olives and olive oil, nine to 18%. I'd say for human being, the thing that might fit there, that's close for sure, right there with olive oil is chocolate, strangely. Now, obviously not Milky Way or sugarized nonsense or the Three Musketeers or any of that junk, um, but real chocolate, right? Real dark chocolate that doesn't have sugar in it. Okay, now let's jump to the next thing. Then you're going, wait, so 20%, what does that mean again? 
Well, it means that if let's say you live to be 100, it means 120. That's what 20% increase in lifespan means. Let's say you're going to live, let's say you're like, wait, 30% increase in lifespan. That means 130. That's how powerful charcoal is as a detoxification agent. My research on Taoism, on the great yogis of the world, indicates to me that the great longevity specialists of the world knew, they all knew charcoal. They knew it intuitively. They knew it. it's in their systems, but that part doesn't get translated over into Western thought because Western thought goes, I need a food to eat. I need, it has to be an herb. It's got to be some special herb up in the mountains that caused me to live a long time. That's just our Western the way we think about things, right? So that's where the books go. But charcoal is unbeatable, actually, compared to anything. There's no herb you're going to be able to take that's going to extend your life and improve your health better than activated charcoal. And try it out. Um, that's been a big prerogative of mine for years now. I'm in love with it. I absolutely, it's one of my favorite things in my life, actually. it got I got so into it. Let me tell you how crazy I got into this. I realized that, like, wait a second. I've, any odors coming off your body? Charcoal. Any odors coming off your mouth? charcoal can you brush your teeth with charcoal absolutely try it find out what happens and look into that do a little internet search on brushing your teeth with charcoal find out the truth can you use charcoal for example let's say you got odors in the fridge you bet get a little jar like this fill it up with charcoal leave the jar open put it in the fridge and it'll absorb all those odors what about can i use charcoal you said something about plants can i put it in my plants and you bet you can absolutely i got crazy i mean i I buy charcoal in totes, big old giant bags that have rice-sized pieces of charcoal all prepared for me that I use in farming. And I usually get now two a year, two big giant bags a year of that. Will that toughen up the trees to survive snow? You bet. It can, it can have that effect. Can it toughen up trees in general? Yes, you bet. There's nothing that resets the environment more than charcoal. You see how crazy this is? And it goes on and on. Let's say, for example, I have an old house on my farm. And it has odors that come out of the toilet. So I just started flushing charcoal down the toilet. And I started putting charcoal all around anywhere where gases could escape, anywhere in the walls where gases could come up from the old sewer. Completely gone. Wiped it out. No more smell. No more odors. If cleanliness is near to godliness, I like being clean. Therefore, I use charcoal. Is charcoal good for soap? You bet it is. Best thing ever. Incredible for soap and goes on and on and on like this. You want to clean the environment around you. You want to remediate it from chemicals. Let's say you moved into a place. You're like, I don't know what kind of chemicals they sprayed here. Throw charcoal all over the place. Throw it on the ground. Go get a big tote like this. I get it from biocharnow.com. Biocharnow.com. And you get a big tote like this. Not the edible stuff, although you could eat it. It's not going to hurt you. But this is for farming or for your yard and just throw, just throw it everywhere. I just throw it everywhere, all over the place. It's the best thing for the environment. Crazy. See how it, it, this is incredible. Now, I want to go to the next step on the herbalism. So we're still in step four parasites. Parasites are real. Every single cleanse. We do parasite cleansing. We go for the wormwood, the black clove, or the black walnut, the cloves. We go for the quassia, the male fern, the herbs that get the parasites out, neem leaf. Um, sometimes diatomaceous earth, actually. In some formulas, like my, my friend, Dr. Group, we do his Paratrex formula. That has diatomaceous earth in it. I wouldn't recommend diatomaceous earth every day. It's not a tonic substance like charcoal. Um, but for doing a cleanse to get the parasites out, I definitely recommend it. And if any parasites come out, you stay on it for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 days, depending on how much is coming out of you. I've had people get worms out in bundles for weeks and even months, right? Our whole system is saying, oh, no, 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 parasites, that's like in Mexico. Oh, no, no, parasites, that's like a dog. Oh, no, no, parasites, that's somewhere else. No, 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 absolutely not. The, the key, actually, in my opinion, once you've done all the other steps, super key, if you never want to be sick again, no cold, cough, flu, fever, anything ever again, that's over. That's gone. We cured that long ago. If, that, if that's your goal, which I, I found out from my great teachers back at the Price Pottinger Nutrition Foundation back there in San Diego 27 years ago, I found out their theories. I, found, I put them into action for 27 years. They were right. There's no chance people are like you're worried about a flu or a cough or a cold. I'm like, no, that, that's impossible. They're like, what do, you, what do you mean it's impossible? It's like, it's I, I will never be sick again ever in my life. What are you talking about? You can't say that. Yes, you can because you've never been taught what the actual causes of cold, cough, flu, fever, et cetera, are. And the, the cause is that your body has parasites 
and they're eating away at your immune system, meaning there's a fire going on over here and you're trying to fight off respiratory conditions over here. And this one's it's just too much. Your body goes, we don't have enough resources. And that's when people get sick. <clears throat> I'm going to just say that again. I'm going to say it this way. Tapeworms, worms, liver flukes, parasites in your system, harmful bacteria, virus, they're actually parasites. So they can't defend themselves from other parasites. So like a tapeworm is a virus factory. I can't tell you how important that is to learn. Um, I learned that from great parasitologists like Hannah Kruger 27 years ago. I put it into action. She was right. She was right. Bless her heart. She was right. You get parasites out, you get the worms out. All of a sudden you, you go, oh, 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 I'm not, what do you, what's going on here? Right. And when you do get worms out of you, you're awake, you're aware until that happens. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. That's someone else. Oh, no, that's him over there. Or that's him over there. That's her over there. No, no, no. You have to look at yourself first. You're going to find out crazy stuff happens. Not everybody has these things, but a lot of people do more than you'd think. And when they come out, it's better out than in. And when they come out, you've got to go all the way to get them out. Again, there's certain herbs that get them out. And they could, it could be Condorongo bark, Powdiarco, Cat's Claw, Male Fern, Quassia, Cloves. These are just ones I can name off the top of my head. Um, wormwood. Oh, what's it up? Black walnut I mentioned already and, and the neem leaf and it just goes on. There's many and all herbal systems. They have this because they know they were smart back then, a lot smarter than us. And they know, oh, you've been eating from the environment. You could have parasites. Oh, the dog's been licking your face. You could have parasites. And yes, you can get parasites from a dog licking your face because that's one of the ways to transmit parasites. Can you get parasites from sushi? hundred percent. Tapeworms. Are, I would never eat sushi. I would never touch it. It's all loaded with, with tapeworms. I, I, someone's got to tell you, you know, that's the thing is like, it's not a, it's not a pretty picture, but Jesus, is it an important one. This is all still part four. This is all part of the herbalism. Now, once we've got the parasites out, so now we, we're working the heavy metals down and there's other things that are good for heavy metals. And I would fit into here like MSM. I'm a big fan of MSM, methyl sulfonyl methane as a supplement. I love it. I mean, when I have it, I take it. Um, sometimes I get, you know, distracted or suddenly I'm in a new place or I'm a different, you know, location. I don't have my MSM with me, but when I have it, I take it and I really like it. That's really antagonistic to mercury. And there, there's other things like that. Coated silver. Some of you like, some of you guys like my coated silver. Let me tell you something. Coated silver is 20,000 parts per million. One drop of coated silver contains more actual silver in it than a bottle of colloidal silver, four ounce bottle that's going, that's being sold in a health food store. That's how much of a breakthrough that is. Let me just say this again, because silver is antagonistic to lead and lead contamination. You think that's something from old, from like the Roman times? No way. We look at Flint, Michigan. Come on, you guys look at Flint, Michigan massive lead contamination. The United States is loaded with lead contamination all over the place in the water supply even. So let's say you got to, you absorbed it. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I absorbed it from the pipes. So when I grew up in New Jersey, I'm sure it was all in the pipes and the water supply and I absorbed it because we didn't have water filters back then. We didn't even think of anything of that. So what's antagonistic to lead? Silver. Does a colloidal silver that you, a clear bottle you're buying in a store actually really have anything in it? The research, and Dr. Pye, rec rec he, uh, he, he mentioned this. There was a research study came out in a peer-reviewed journal, 14 colloidal silvers on the market, 12 of them failed. Um, one of the ones that didn't fail, of course, was coated silver. Coated silver is 20,000 parts per million, not 10 parts per million. Right. So in terms of effectiveness, there is no it's, it's a joke, actually. That's I'll leave that to your own investigation. But this is part of this step four, which is like I want the lead out and silver is antagonistic to lead. Silver is antagonistic to parasites also. Now, I want to get now into the tonic herbs like the shaga right here and the reishi. And I've got a little bit of goji tincture right here and got some tonic herbs and tincture over here. And. It, a lot, if you were in my house, you're able to see what I'm doing is a lot of times I'm out in nature collecting tonic herbs, drying them out and making teas out of them and living on that a lot. Now, sometimes I'm traveling. So this kind of stuff is really good, right? And you're, you know, this is, this is basically what's in this one. This is a, this is, this is essentially a Japanese formula. Oh, it's got philodendron in it. Oh, I like philodendron. That's natural antibiotic, really powerful tonic herb from from Japan and China. 
Uh, it's got all kinds of goodies in here. But these kinds of things are really cool traveling, right? Because the tincture is easy to go with. Now, normally, again, I've got bowls of like medicinal mushrooms that I pick myself and dry, and I'll throw those into tea and just make tea, more and more and more tea. That's where you eventually get when you get into the tonic herbs, eventually you go like, wait a second, you mean my medicine is growing right around me? You mean herbs are growing right around me? And medicine be your food is growing right around me all the time, only all your life, only forever, only again and again, only constantly. That's how it is. That's what reality is. Just think about this for a second. Everything we've ever needed is just right around us. I'm in a forest here, so I know I can just walk around. Eventually, I find mushrooms growing out of trees. I break those off. I dry them in the sun. Those are medicinal mushrooms. Boom, there I got my medicine right there. This is the, this is the fundamental nature of reality. Our medicine and our food is growing right around us. Even if you live in a city, now I wouldn't recommend eating stuff like a dandelion growing out of the sidewalk in New York City. But you get the idea. I have seen chaga mushroom growing in New York City. I've also seen reishi mushroom growing right in New York City. Nobody else notices. It's crazy. It's like, there it is. My God, there's a reishi mushroom growing right there. You know how in New, in New York, you're walking down the, the sidewalk and there's a square that's opened up. And there's a tree in there and the tree's growing. And boom, a reishi mushroom's coming out of that tree. And you're like, nobody's seeing it. It's just the craziest thing ever of all time. And it's, it's a fascinating discovery to just know that your medicine is always right around you all the time. Can't be taken away from you. Only in your mind can it be taken away from you. Only in your mind can the human media confuse you. You get out of that confusion, you come and hang out with me for two or three days, all of a sudden you'd be like, well, wait, what? The medicine's all right, it's all right here. We don't actually have to go anywhere. And that's an important thing. And we may come to a point with the way that this politics and media is going, we may come to a point of survival. It's really important to know what, to do to survive and what herbs you could take that will protect you from contagion because they're out there right around you. And of course, the highest on my list is the medicinal mushrooms and the highest of those two, Chaga, the king and Rishi, the queen. That's the king and the queen. In fact, oh geez, where I have, I'm going to get some for you guys. Can, hey, is anybody, can anybody hear me? Okay. I'm um, watch this. I'm going to get you guys. I'm going to show you some Rishis that we got. And these were actually, this is my friend Dandelion picked these up in Oregon. This is Rishi Oregon. And uh, I was just, you know, I'm just getting back to this new place here. So we, 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 I was, there it is. We opened the box. It's like, oh, these are from an event we did. Okay. Let me just show you. Let me just do this one first. This is Rishi Oregon, right? Look, look at that. That thing's a beast. You know how much tea I can make out of this? I just break off a little piece, a little piece, a little section off here. I could make 30 teas out of that. Just one little piece of this. Now, sometimes they get really interesting and strange shaped this is also a rishi look at this also a rishi just like this but this one was growing in a weird spot and i like the weird ones because those are the artifacts sometimes they have a better chemistry in them and so that's another rishi right there we have more don't we yeah so we're going to show you some more here just show you things you could pick in your backyard you're like oh that doesn't grow in my backyard you bet it does florida i've seen ones in florida five times bigger than that five times the biggest reishi mushrooms in north america grow in not the pacific northwest nope in florida of all places what a shocker it's all around us all the time and that's something i just love to bring to everyone's attention your medicine is near okay i'm going to get you i'm going to show you some more here there's other things in the tonic herb group that are really powerful. Uh oh, look at this. We got all kinds. Here's more reishi. It has the neck. That's what you showed Okay, me. yeah. You can see you see reishi has a neck, right? So if it comes out as a bracket like this one. Here, right, this one here. Can I get this one? Yeah. Okay. See, this is a bracket, right? It came out of the tree like this. It's a bracket. This has a neck. See the neck, right? So that's a reishi. If it comes out like a big old bracket like this, that's going to be a relative of reishi, but it's not a reishi. It's still very good. Look at that beast. I mean, this, this thing's heavy. This is going to make enough. This will make a thousand teas. That's how much is in this, right? All immunological. This is immune system food. Okay, so let's get into reishi and chaga. Here's another bracket mushroom. You can see it comes out of the tree like that. It's like a bracket, right? Are bracket mushrooms, tree mushrooms toxic? The answer is no. The only place you're going to find a toxic tree mushroom. Thank you. That was my lovely assistant, Rubina. Um, the only place you're going to find a toxic tree mushroom 
A mushroom growing out of a tree is in Australia and it's a yellow one. And that's the only polypore in the world that's toxic. There are certain mushrooms that you're like, well, it's growing on decomposed wood on the floor of the forest and it kind of has an umbrella shape. It's not like this. It's not this kind of shape. It's not this kind of shape. It's actually an umbrella shape, the kind that we're familiar with, that you might mistake. You go, oh, that's a wild shiitake. Oh, no, no, that's a, a wild foliota when, in fact, it's a deadly gallerina. But that would be growing on decomposed wood on the forest floor. If you're in North America and you're going through a forest and trees are standing like this and you see stuff growing out the side of it, that's medicine for you. You could take those off and you could dry it. Now, obviously, use your, you know, there's a word of caution because you might not know what you're doing. And if you just like, oh, I'm, I can eat that. You can't just go eat a foliota, which is a type of mushroom grows out of a tree and, and you can dry it, make tea out of it. No problem. But if you just try to eat it raw, it can actually cause a little bit of a stomach upset. I've done it and been there. Um, it lasted for about 24 hours. It wasn't too bad, but it was last for about 24 hours. I could go on and on about wild herbs that are out here. The key thing is, is you got to fit into it the way that you understand it. For example, I started out with reishi mushroom, this beautiful thing right here. I started out with this in a health food store in capsules because I didn't understand what this was. I didn't know like what it grows in the forest. I didn't know any of that stuff. I started out with the capsules and the next thing I know I'm watching videos. Next thing I'm like, wait a second, what? Next thing you know, in the state of Texas here, we have tons of reishi mushroom, crazy amounts of reishi mushroom growing here. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. Doesn't look quite like that. Actually it looks a little bit brighter red. Sometimes it looks a little slightly different depending on what tree it's growing out of. Cause this is growing off a different tree. This is growing off a conifer and the ones here grow off a sycamore relative called liquid ambar. So it's slightly different, but it's reishi mushroom. So this, this is just a phenomenal area that you just interface with as you understand it. You're like, well, look, I can I go to the health food store and get reishi and like a capsule? Yes, start there. Chaga mushroom. Okay, you mean this? Like, I went to his website and they had chaga mushroom in this tincture. Should I start with that? Yeah, that's a great place to start. And then you learn and you investigate and it gets better and better. I'm going to get to your question, so hang in there. And you get better at it and you get more understanding, but you start out maybe in the health food world or maybe in the internet world, learn a little bit, get a few products from different people and try them out. And then you start to go, Oh, I get, I see what's going on Th now. I'm going to this tonic herb thing. Okay. Let me just back up for a second. Cause I'm just running ahead of myself. Yes. There's herbs that get the parasites out. Like garlic is too very anti-parasitic for sure. And all the other ones I named. Yes, there are substances like charcoal and silver that get heavy metals out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's part of it too. Yes. But there are substances, namely in this category, reishi mushroom, chaga mushroom, lion's mane mushroom, tremetes, auricularia, and a guy could go on and on, griffola, otherwise known as um, maitake, and just goes on and on and on. It's endless. Latoporus, sulfurious, and there's about 20 or 24 top, top, top best mushrooms in the world stuff, birch polypores in that group, agaricus blazei eyes in that group, cordyceps, it just goes on and on. You don't have to do them all. You just got to pick one and just go, I'm going to hang my hat on that one. Rishi is a good one for that, by the way. Great place to start. Really recommended. Because if you don't know anything about medicinal mushrooms or anything about tonic herbs, Rishi mushroom. That's the one. That's the place to start. Now, what's it doing? Like, why would you like, okay, like, what's that even mean? Like, what, Rishi mushroom. Okay, what's that, what's that about? It's immune system food. It's immune system food. Okay, so there's food that's great, like celery is great for your bones. Um, lettuce is great for your lungs. Blueberries are great for your eyes. Reishi mushroom for your immune system, white blood cell nutrition. To my mind, the tonic herbs are all about that. They're really about modulating your immune system. And it's not like garlic where it's an upper. It's not like echinacea. I like echinacea. I like garlic, but those are uppers. They're immune system uppers. The, the tonic herbs, the top 70, 80 herbs in the world, like reishi, Chaga, astragalus, powdiarco, cat's claw, or otherwise known as unia de gato, vanilla, um, tulsi, ashwagandha, shilajit, turmeric. These are dual directional substances, meaning if your immune system is firing up too high, they bring it back down. They're dual directional. If it needs to come up, it'll bring it up. But if it's firing too high, it brings it back down. They're dual directional. That's why the tonic herbs are, that's it. That's the thing. When you get to my age, you're like, 
that's it's all about the tonic herbs. I mean, yeah, okay, it's nice to eat food, but do I really need the food? No, I don't really need that food. But the herbs, that's I can definitely more of this for sure. Okay, so the immune the, the immune system factor is like okay, then you're like I might do in a given day. I don't know, sometimes ten different tonic herbs. I might do five. I might do one. I might do none. You know, if I'm fasting, I'm doing none. Um, but if I'm not fasting, I'm usually doing at least one, usually five, because I like just, you know, getting, getting after some of these traditional formulas and mixing these things together. And I, by the way, I recommend traditional formulas because before there was television, before there was fake news, before there was all these distractions, before there was all the nonsense, people live from the earth and the traditional formulas arose from human instinct right? We're separated from our instinct now. And so the traditional formulas is a great place to start. And by the way, I'll get to your questions hanging there. And I see your questions coming through and it's just wonderful. And you know, I've seen, okay, let me just digress for two seconds. Somebody says, what boosts red blood cells in nature? Everything's always obvious and super easy. I'll tell you what boosts red blood cells, red food. It's literally that simple. We got so smart. We became dumb. I'm, I'm not even kidding. That's the real truth. Red foods boost red blood cells or blood. Okay. And somebody asked, okay, then what, you know, what, what, what do I recommend for E. coli? And look at all these medicinal mushrooms. These are powerful antibiotics, but they're natural and in balance. Look into it. I would never take like an antibiotic from a doctor. Me personally, I'm, you take your own advice, but me, cause I got better ones. I got better than what they have. My own chaga it, uh, extraction system that I make my own chaga for my own wildly picked chaga. The dual, uh, and I, I'm, I basically have the chaga alcohol um, fraction, the water soluble fraction, and the concentrate fraction. And I mix those back together and then suspend that in alcohol. I, there's nothing I'm going to get from a doctor. It's going to be better than that. No, sorry. So just so you know, somebody's actually beating the doctors at their own game. That's, you know, if you're, you have to figure it out for yourself because I can't, the way our system is, is like, I can't actually give any medical advice, right? Because the system wants to sell you drugs. That's why I think we're all becoming more and more aware of that. I'm sure. Okay. And I could go on and on about that, but let's let, I digress. Let's come back to the point. The point is, is that the tonic herbs are one of the most significant factors in maintaining and modulating immunity for the rest of our lives to a point where you are, you're, you're zinging all day long. So there's flu, cough, virus, this, that, the other thing. It's just all, it's not even, there's not a chance, not a chance. Okay. Now let's get to step five. Step five is what we call, I like to call it electronic medicine or the gadgets or the healing technology. Cause it's not all electronic and all the different accoutrement that's out there. You know, I listen to these guys like, you know, David Wilcox of the world. I'm friends with David Wilcox. And I like David Wilcox, but you know, they're like, one day we're going to have all this technology. One day we're going to have all this healing technology. That one day is already here. It's just suppressed because the system doesn't want anything to do with it. And they come after people who promote it. Now there's things like ozone systems, which I have extensive research on. I've done, I've used myself for over 25 years. I worked at a clinic in Tijuana for 10 years where we gave ozone to people, the safest, most powerful thing ever. It, but it's suppressed because it's a competitor to the big pharmaceutical interest, which is at this point trying to take over the world. I think you probably figured that out right now. That what's really going on is that these people have so much money and so much power and so much influence. They bought the media, they bought the government and the governments of the world. They bought the United Nations that they were like, we could sell more and more. We could control the whole drug thing and they have to be on our drugs and our injections forever. That's what they're doing, right? Obvious captain, obvious stuff here. Um, and they don't like competitors like ozone and they don't like competitors like herbalism and they don't like competitors like electronic medicine. So what you do is you just don't compete against them. You just give people who want to know here it is. And I don't go out there and go, this is going to beat their thing. That, that would be foolish. They'll, they'll have my head on a platter if I do that. But it's not illegal to do ozone in your own home with your own equipment. It's not illegal to do herbalism in your own home with your own stuff. It's all legal right? At least for now, we'll see what they're going to go for next. These gadgets are so advanced, rife machines, frequency devices, zappers. 
what are some of my favorites? Pulsed electromagnetic field devices, radionics devices. It goes on and on and on. Now, the system, because the system is very, it's, it's basically a scientism system, right? It's not scientific method. No, 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 no. Scientific method means you have no prejudgment. You go, well, let's just see, does it work or not? And we'll run a test. If it works, then the scientism says, no, it didn't work. And we're going to make sure it didn't work because we're going to censor you. That's what scientism does. So the, the worldview we have and that we've been raised in with television media and the brainwashing is basically trying to say that only their system works and that there's nothing else out there. And this is the reason why when someone like a David Wilcock gets up there and says, hey, actually, there's all kinds of options here and they're going to be with us soon. One day we're going to have breakthroughs in medicine. It's like, dude, where have you been? We already have those breakthroughs. We've had them forever. They've already existed for hundreds of years, actually. I mean, the, in the case of ozone, the Nikola Tesla ozone system, which I have here, which is totally legal. You can buy it. You could put it together yourself. I mean, obviously, you can't go out and advertise that's going to cure this, that, and the other thing. But it is legal to have one. You can buy one easily. That system was invented by Nikola Tesla 120 years ago. And it's really relatively unchanged in the, the way it works. How crazy is that? And I could go on and on about this kind of stuff because this has been my work. It's been Dr. Gabriel Cousins' work. It's been Dr. Pai's work for years. In fact, you know, I'll, whenever I get together with those guys, I'm always like, okay, what kind of new gadgets you got? And they're like, here, check this out. Then we got this little gadget and that little gadget and check this thing out. And we got this ozone sauna. Okay, now we're gonna, you're going to get in this hyperbaric chamber. That's another one of these gadgets. And it goes on and on like that. Ultimately, it's when you put all five of those pieces together, right? Let's go back to the beginning the bowel cleansing. You've got to pull the plug out of the bathtub and empty it all out. Even if you're thin, you're like, no, 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 I'm thin. There's no toxicity. Oh, you're sorry. You're wrong. I've had people who are rail thin, dump massive amounts of parasites out, bundles of worms out, bundles. So it's sorry. It just doesn't correlate. If somebody could be 20 pounds overweight and actually be relatively clean. Someone could be 20 pounds underweight and be relatively dirty. It's not weight related most of the time. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, we got to wring that tissue out. We've got to actually move. We've got to exercise. We've got to get upside down. We've got to do all the things that wring that tissue out. And that's hot colds. That's deep tissue work. We've all the things we mentioned before. Number three, we got to get on the right diet for ourselves. Find a plant based diet, keeps the inflammation down. Don't eat too much, less is more. In fact, the less you eat, the longer you live, so the more you get to eat. Remember that. <laughs> the less you eat, the longer you live, so the more you get to eat. Now, number four is we got to make herbalism and the supplement regime that's appropriate for us. By the way, I really, I should actually take a few of these. I'm really digging, I'm into this product right now. This is Dr. Pye's product. This stuff's crazy. This is crazy stuff. If you've got a, let's say you're, let's say you're all into all the things we're into, right? And you're, you're an old timer. Try it. You'll find out. Um, but let's say you've got a new timer, like your mom or your dad, and you're like, they're on Advil or Excedrin or one of those type of things. And you're like, look, I got something else for you to try this stuff. This stuff, the, the he calls it Bosmeric SR. I never, whoa. And that's the power of having someone like Dr. Pai on board with us. You know what? He's a clinician. And just like all, every single clinician throughout all time, most of them are into scientism and they're not into natural stuff. But Dr. Pai is a fat formula that works all natural, gets your job done, potent stuff. Whoa. But it's good for, like I send this to my mom, you know, cause my mom's not, you know, full organic and all the other stuff, but she'll take these and it works, gets the inflammation down. Okay. Hold on. So that supplement regime, that's number four, tonic herbs, activated charcoal, get the parasites out. What's the fifth category? That's the technology. We have so much incredible technology. It's crazy. Electronic medicine. Most of it's electronic medicine, not all. The ozone systems, the hyperbaric oxygen systems, the systems that basically are legal, but are suppressed in the mainstream view because they're a competitor to drugs and those and, and injections, right? So those big pharma companies make a lot of money on drugs and injections. They're running the media, they're running the show, they're running the government. And so they're basically trying to sell you what's going on with on what we're seeing on tv is a big sales job I, I i'm sure everyone's figured that out right now 
right? Fear, 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 fear. Sell, 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 sell. So there's Dr. Fauci. Sell, sell, sell. I'm going to sell you on this. I'm going to sell you on this. We know that vitamin D works. Come on. We know that zinc works. Come on. We know that hydroxychloroquine works. Come on. We know that ivermectin works. Come on. If you look at those things, by the way, like I can create, let me just digress for a second. Listen to this. So the reason why hydroxychloroquine combined with zinc works is because that's an old herbal principle where you take something like hydroxychloroquine, which would be the natural equivalent to that would be something like propolis. So you take propolis, for example, and you're going to mix that with something that's super high in zinc, like a good chaga extract. And you get that same boom, 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 that one, two punch of the hydroxychloroquine with the zinc, but in a more natural way. There's a, a hydroxychloroquine is a, it's a metaphor. It's a similar molecule to quinine and quinine can be taken also with zinc and high zinc substances, basically black foods. Black foods are higher in zinc, been proven in labs for years. All foods that are black are higher in zinc. So that's another way you could take that and you go, wait, okay, do we have a quinine plant up here? And the answer is, okay, if you're in the North, yeah, poplars. Bombagiliad, the little poplar buds that pop out right now, springtime. You can mix those all together, mash those all up, make those into a tincture. That's your quinine. And then you're going to take, let's say, I like chaga and my little chaga mix that I make because it's super high in zinc. And you put them together. So made from the forest. It's all made from right outside of here in the forest. You see how crazy this is? We are so suffering from bad medicine. It's crazy. It's all synthetic. It's all scientism. It's all marketing. It's all, we're going to sell you on this. We're going to sell you on that. When nature is providing what we need, it's all there. Nature's doing the job for us. Okay. Now, by the way, so Michelle said, can someone message me privately about what I recommend for bowel cleansing? I recommend enemas, colonics. If you want to do coffee enemas, wonderful. I do medicinal mushroom tea enemas. Wonderful. I love those. That's great. Another one is just find a good laxative for you. I like aloe vera a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Because it's very gentle compared to like senna and things that are all of a sudden you go, ah, you know, it's just super intense and rough. And aloe vera, you can just get a fresh raw aloe vera. You fillet the gel out, throw that into a blender, blend it with orange juice or your favorite smoothie or whatever you like to blend up, soup, anything. And it, you don't taste it, but when you eat it, your body senses it and goes, uh-oh, and whoosh, things come out. And you don't do that all the time. You just do that when you're cleansing four times a year. Okay. So I think I've covered the basics of what I wanted to cover. There's a lot there and we've got a lot of questions. So I was going to, I was supposed to go another 10 minutes and then take questions, but I think I want to take questions now. If you guys can help coordinate that. I'm not sure the best way to do that. I could just read the questions. Is that the, the best or do you guys want to curate for me or how should we do it? Hey, hey, David, this is Ben from The Real Truth. Thank you so much. And this has just been phenomenal for all of us. Yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in here. What we're going to do is actually ask everybody to raise their hands. And you've been so gracious by answering some of those questions from the chat box. From here on in, we're going to take raised hands questions. And so people will come in. We'll pick those raised hands in the order by which they come in. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping for everybody else. We already see some raised hands, which is great. Thanks, everyone. In case you don't know how to raise your hand, there is a reactions button in your Zoom tools. You click on the reactions tab. You'll see a bunch of emojis. One of those emojis is raise hand. You click on that and we'll see it come in in the order in which it does. There's a few people out there that might not have a reactions tab. If that's the case, you can click on your participants tab and you'll see the raised hand function there. Um, a lot of questions coming in already. And you know we wanna be respectful of everybody that has a question. So we would ask that you only ask one question of David and try to keep it brief uh, and direct as well. Everybody, you can see davidwolf.com right there on your screen as well. Uh, great place to, to go find out more uh, about David Avocado Wolf. David, again, thank you for being so gracious. This has just been incredible. And um, so with that said, if you're ready, we'll jump in and I'll ask our first person. You got it. Great. Awesome. Thank you. So again, everyone, what we do is, is we call you out by name. Our tech team will send you a request for you to unmute and we'll have you go ahead and ask your question. So up first is Benny F. Benny, if you'd go ahead and unmute, please. David, best lecture ever. Can right on, you thank comment? you. Can you comment on raw versus cooked? And you mentioned food combining. No one else has mentioned that this conference. Great. You got it. I love raw food. I'm a big fan of raw food. I was actually a raw foodist for 17 and a half years, and I've been a vegetarian for 31 years. 
So I, you know, I love, you know, I love raw vegetarian food. Is it right for everyone to suddenly go from whatever their cooked diet and suddenly they're eating massive salads of all this fiber? You have to be careful because, you know, it's, it's like building a muscle where you got to be careful about how much fiber suddenly you're exposing your body to. I like the idea of blending the food. If you're new to raw foods and you're like, I, you know, I can't handle all that fiber, but I can blend stuff up. Blending is a really good way of like pre-chewing the food essentially because it's your, that's what the blender blades are doing. So that's a good strategy there. Is, is raw food better? Well, raw food, in my opinion, is better because not just because the nutrients are more intact. It's, it's energetically better. It feels better. It's, it's more right. Do I eat only raw food now? No. Do I eat mostly raw food now? Yes. Um, it, it's, but it's not like the old days where I was like hundred percent raw every, you know, all day for, you know, 17 and a half years, just because that's a very extreme position, but I'm an extreme person. I want to explore like, Hey, if somebody says raw food is better, I want to know, I want to try it out. And I really appreciate people who are like me who would want to know. They're like, okay, this dude said raw food is better. Let's try it out. Um, but you have to feel the food, I think. And the best way to do that usually is when you're cleansing, because when you, when you're cleansing and you're pairing it, you're like, I can do this raw food for a week. Let's try it out. And then you feel those natural highs. And that's the side of raw food that's really amazing. Because every animal, like we got a deer running run around the backyard here. They're all raw food eaters. They're in a, they know, by the way, if you're a raw food eater, animals know. They are tuned into that. It's really amazing. So if you want more connection to nature, you want more connection with the animals, especially the wild animals, there's something to the raw food in that regard. That is really amazing to know. And uh, thank you for that, David. Up next, we have Steve. Steve S., go ahead. Uh, David, which if, if all pulsed electromagnetic field machines were free, which one would you buy for if someone for their home? And is the answer different if you're treating a disease versus not treating a disease? And are they safe? Some of them seem to have very high power. So how do you decide which one to buy for home use? Great question. I mean, I'm not familiar with every brand that that is out there, but I'm very familiar with the uh, with three brands, but two in particular. So I've used QRS, Beamer, and MRS 2000 for years, over a decade actually. Those three, I like the Beamer probably the best out of those. Although I personally have an MRS, it's now called IMRS 2000 that I've had since like 2007. So in terms of the durability of these things, they're crazy durable and a good investment. The best for treating a condition, probably Beamer has the most use by clinicians. You know, like if you go to hang out at Dr. Pye's house, he's got a Beamer, you know, because he's a clinician. So he's always looking at the research and he's going to have a machine that's best for the research based on the research. Is Beamer the best company out there, you know, in terms of its you know, staff and the people who are running it. No, unfortunately not. And they're, they're going to, some of the higher ups in Beamer got ripped off by the people running the company. This is a common story that not that the product's bad, but that the, you know, the people running the company can be, you know, some people get greedy or they don't like somebody or they push somebody out of the company or this kind of thing. So there probably is going to be a derivative Beamer product coming soon. At least that's what Dr. Pye and I discussed last time I was with him. What do these things do? Well, one of the most important effects of pulsed electromagnetic field technology. And I'm going to lump in one other product, which is the Biomat. Um, the Biomat with the amethysts in it. And, and I also have jade mats too, by the way, with the little jade circles on those. And I use those. Those aren't at quite at the level of the Beamer or the MRS 2000. In my opinion, neither of those two are. But geez, if you want a, a knockout punch and you know you're you come back from a long trip and you know, you've been traveling 20 hours and and you get home and you lay down on a biomat, the amethyst map, man, is that a great tool for that? And it's almost like an electric blanket if you live in a cold climate. And I love the people at Biomat. That in terms of a company that's run well, I actually think that Biomat is the best run company of all those. Is it the best product? Well, it depends on what you want. I mean, it's not as broad spectrum of a product as say an MRS or a Beamer or a QRS. I like the people running it. So I've used all those devices. And again, I have those jade mats, which aren't as robust and they're, you know, they're not as full on, but you know, we have one at home and we use it. So I've now thrown at you how many five different machines there on the pulsed electromagnetic field. But let me just get to the main benefit. The main benefit is if you lay it down on one of those and you've got sore muscles, your muscles are, are wiped out. You've got, you, you suddenly hiked eight miles and you haven't hiked eight miles in years. You lay on one of those things for 48 minutes, you're completely rejuvenated. Your, the lactic acid is out of your muscles. It's really a, amazing like that. And that's one of the ways that I started going like, whoa, this 
this thing is working. Let's say, you know, a lot of times people are doing this, right? You're sitting on computers and you're all cinched up. Pulsed electromagnetic field mats are crazy powerful for loosening you back up. You lay down on one of those mats for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm perfectly fine, back to normal. That's the power. So th those are my thoughts on those, uh, those devices. And love them all, by the way. I just want to put that out there. You know, if you got a deal on a Beamer, you can find one, get it. Thanks so much, David. Up next, we have, excuse me, we have Stephanie. Stephanie, looking forward to your question. Hey, David, thank you for the awesome lecture. Um, I was wondering, how do you keep yourself from getting dehydrated when you're fasting? And how do you feel about diatomaceous earth for parasites and candida? Great questions. Okay, number one, I'm going to say something very controversial here, which is I've had to learn the hard way. And I learned this from a guy who year lived years. I'm going to say something that's just going to rock your belief systems. It's going to rock your belief systems. And I get it. I get that people go, there's no way he's lying. This is BS. This is some kind of thing. It's just, I get that because what I'm going to say to you is so unbelievable that unless you've lived my life, unless you've been there, you couldn't possibly believe it's true. Or some of you could, some of you go, yeah, obvious. I, I had a guy who's a good friend of mine. His name's Genesis. He's from um, originally from the UK, lives in the Netherlands now. And uh, he lived for years without, without um, food. And, and he explained, he was a professional rugby player and, uh, and he lived with me for a period of time. So I've been around him and, and I know what's going on there energetically. What's what the way this guy's transducing energy is really amazing. And again, I get the, you know, the negativity and the people doubting and all that stuff, but he taught me a very important principle about fasting. And again, I live with a guy, so I know it's not like I'm guessing that it's possible. I know it's possible. And he showed me how it's possible. He basically over 11 years through salt water cleansing became a breatharian. I know that's a controversial thing and, you know, don't get too caught up on it, but basically what he did is he drank four gallon, or four liters of salt water every morning for a week and then three weeks off and then a week and then three weeks off and step-by-step step cleaned up his diet, step-by-step step moved his way away from food. And eventually he realized that he didn't actually need food anymore. Worked out super fit, way more fit than me. Um, we used to do fireman carries at my house where, you know, he, I'd carry him as far as I could, then he'd carry me. This is a guy who hadn't eaten food. Um, the, when he came to visit me, by the way, at the airport, the Toronto, this is when I was up in Canada, the Toronto police and border people could not actually comprehend that because he not only overcome desires for food, but he'd also overcome desires for physical. He didn't have any possessions. He had no possessions. He had one pair of clothes, another pair of clothes and an iPod. That's it. That's all his personalized ID. That's all personal possession. And they couldn't handle it at the airport. They're like, no, something, you know, they couldn't. You see how crazy this is? Such an amazing thing. And I finally got him out of customs after four hours battling with them at the airport because they just couldn't comprehend it. Nobody can comprehend it. The salt water is the key. Now you're thinking, no, 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 salt's bad. Salt's definitely bad. I read in a book it was bad. Yeah, table salt's bad. Kiln dried salt's bad. Salt that's had all the trace minerals removed is bad. Salt that's not natural from the earth is bad. For sure, all of the above. That's all like fast food junk. But a real salt from the ocean, a real sea salt is is as good a food as anything on, on earth, a real living salt. Like I go a lot of times when I'm in Hawaii, I'll go to areas on the cliffs and I'll climb around the cliffs and get the stalagmites of salt coming off and collect them in little containers. That's a living substance. That's a powerful substance. And I mix that with water. So with the, with the cleansing and with the dehydration, what's going on is that I can drink lots of water, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be hydrated because suddenly I'd be peeing every 20 minutes. And I want to just point that out. Lots of people do it. They do it all the time. What Genesis showed me is it's salt water. You got to drink salt water. And then what that will do is it hydrates you up all the way through. If you have too much salt, sure, you'll get dehydrated. If you have too much water, you'll get dehydrated. It's the right balance. That's the key. So we do something that's very controversial when we do water fasting, which is we put sea salt in the water so that you can maintain the stable blood pressure. Super important. I could go on about this because, you know, I'm not leading the cleanse with you guys right now, but if we were, I would go on for literally an hour about how to do your water so that you don't get dehydrated. If you follow what I'm saying, by the way, and you have water with electrolytes in it, otherwise known as a real salt in it, otherwise known as a real sea salt in it, you'll actually be hydrated. You need less water. You don't need to be drinking all this water. No, no, no. Hypertension. <clears throat> I'm telling you the right. It's like saying all salt is like sea salt or the best sea salt. 
is like saying all food is fast food. Thanks, David. Up next, we have Norma. Norma, what's your question for David Wolf? Hi, David. Hi. I suspect this lecture is going to be life changing for me. Yay. <laughs> My question is which supplement or how do I get the, oh my God, the colonial silver? That or coated silver? Silver and the charcoal. It capsules or what is the best way to get it? Okay, so you know what? I just reminded me, I didn't answer the other gal's question and her question about diatomaceous earth. I recommend diatomaceous earth only for short periods of time, two weeks at a time, by the way, for that gal. That was a great question because it is good against parasites, but it's also very, it's an irritant on the intestines of a human being and human beings' intestines are much more sensitive than animals. If you have livestock, feed them, you know, if you got goats and stuff like that, you can feed them diatomaceous earth all the time. They're, they're digestion tougher, but human being, you gotta be careful. Um, okay, so with coated silver, Coated silver, it was invented by a friend of mine, Dan Goya, who's up at Clarkson University up in upstate New York. He's in the electronics industry. This, he is so far in that. I mean, almost every electronics that you're using right now contains his technology in it. He, he's got his technology in 40% of the electronics on earth. That's how deep he is in that world. And coated silvers have been used in industry for years. He invented it, actually. And he eventually realized, like, wait a second, he could take like a polysaccharide gel, like an aloe vera gel, and impregnate it with silver ions, and it doesn't clump together. It does not clump together. So you're like, wait, what do you mean clump together? So the big problem with, with coated or with colloidal silver is clumping. The molecules aggregate together, and when you drink that or use it in your mouth and put it on your skin, it clumps real quick, and, you, and that's it. Your body, your microbiome goes, whoa, what's going on there, and reacts to it. So it's not really friendly to the microbiome, not like coated silver, because coated silver is in layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. So your body digests each layer of polysaccharides slowly, so it slowly works its way into your system. That's also why with a normal colloidal silver, you go into a store, it's 15 parts per million or 10 parts per million. And like, there's almost nothing there. With a coated silver, it's 20,000 parts per million because it doesn't clump together. So you can super saturate it into a gel, in this case, aloe vera gel. Now we have it. Let me see if I can get you a bottle. Does anybody, can anybody hear me? We have a coated silver you can bring me. Okay. I'm going to get you guys a coated silver bottle and an open one would be great. Cause I want to show them how, how concentrated it is. And then a, um, a coal biter with charcoal. You got to go with what works for you. I now I don't, you know, like if I'm going to make a charcoal product, which I have, which is my coal biter product, I'm only going to use, and this one's open. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Let me show you. This is the coated silver. You could just see, you could see, look at this. Look how, let me see. Yeah, if you could. Watch how, watch how dark it is. See that? One drop is more coll coll colloidal silver than an entire bottle you're going to buy in a store. So there's actually, in this bottle, there's over 100, it's 150 something drops in this bottle. Um, the normal bottles that I sell are 83, because this, this would be like, you know, this is like a $300 bottle. So we just do the one at $137, but that should last you six months or a year, at least. I mean, I've had bottles last me a year, just a tiny little bottle like that. Okay. So, oh, you, oh, you want me to show, watch this. Okay. I'm, I'm going to show you guys a little, watch this. This is what I do. So with water, I'm going to put the, watch it, just one drop. And that's what I do with my water every day. And I'll drink that. Was this, is this good drinking water? Yeah. Okay. So I'll drink it. And I do one drop a day, but some days I've been doing, doing two and some days I've been doing three. Can you get me a coal biter? Yes. Um, and this is Coated Silver brand, actually. So we work directly with Dan Goya on the Coated Silver brand, FYI. And that's what I have on my website. Now I'm going to show you guys the coal biter. Now, I do something different because I'm a, you know, I've been at this a long time. I've been in the, this world for 27 years. So um, thank you. That's my lovely assistant here. Okay. This, this is what we do with our charcoal. This is encapsulated in Pulaan. So this is encapsulated in fermented yuca or fermented tapioca, which to my mind is the best vegetarian capsule in the world. V caps. Okay. You know, yeah, I'll take a product that's in a V cap. It's not my ideal thing, but if I'm going to make the product, it's going to be in the best cap in the world. Now I'm going to tell you this about activated charcoal. You think 
people always are complaining to me like your charcoal sold out again. What's the deal? It's because we have quality control and we will reject any product that doesn't meet our quality control. And I guarantee you that other companies will, they don't care. Let me, I had a doctor, he was really angry at me, Dr. Mark down there in, uh, in Los Angeles. He was really angry at me because we have a, it's a 400 milligram capsule and it was only filled up like three quarters. And he's like, how, what's the extra space you're ripping us off? I was like, first of all, on the label, if you look, we're telling you you're getting 250 milligrams. We're really putting 280 milligrams in there. So we're, it's actually the label's correct. But he's like, how come there's extra space in there? I'm like, dude, everybody else is using flow agents, maltodextrin, magnesium stearate, citric acid, to flow the charcoal and every other supplement into the capsule. I just, I'm not going to do that. I'll never do that. I don't care how tough it is. I'm not out here to make a million dollars on charcoal. Charcoal isn't a big money making product anyway, but I am out here to make the best charcoal product in the world that's encapsulated. Now you may, may go, you know, I don't want even want the encapsulated product. No problem. You can get activated charcoal on the internet and you can buy it bulk as a powder. And that's a great way to use it. I would recommend what I do when I have it bulk is I have it in a glass container with a glass lid. So it's easy to open the lid. I don't have to unscrew it or do that because the charcoal will get into the grooves. Charcoal gets everywhere. So I have a lid that just comes off. It's really easy to remove it. And I can put a spoon in there and use it that way. If you use another system than that, it can get troubling. I'm just going to warn you because I've been through all of that kind of stuff. Um, so if you're going to do an encapsulated product, it might, there's nobody has a better quality product than what I have with my coal biter. And again, it, we don't use any single little additive, nothing, zero. It's just activated charcoal, zilcho. Everybody else, magnesium stearate, citric acid, um, maltodextrin. And, and actually, I had to put a list. Look at my list. <laughs> this is crazy. No accelerants, um, not irradiated, no glycerin. That's another one that they put in there. What else? And there's more, but I, I digress. That, so that's, that's when, it, when it comes to my own products, I do that kind of quality control just because it's fun for me. And I, I'm not trying to man mass manufacture a million things. You know what I mean? I just, I, I'm, I don't have enough. I've been at this long enough. It's not, this is not like about making a million dollars with charcoal. Thanks, David. And up next, we have another David. David A, what's your question for David Wolf? Hi, how you doing? Hey, David. Um, have you ever heard of the Healy microcurrent frequent machi frequency machine? And if so, what do you think of it? And where can we get the zapper you mentioned when you had a discussion with Dr. Cousins the other day? Great. I have a Healy and a Healy can act as a zapper. Uh, it, the only problem with my Healy is, is that I just haven't used it enough to really, you know, I've got only so many hours in the day and it's really, you got some learning curve, really good device, very powerful. And it's kind of a portable, what we call portable frequency generator, a portable Rife machine. I know there's a lot of terms that could fit into Rife machine or frequency generator, but that's really what Healy is. And Healy can act as a zapper. So what my recommendation is, is put that Healy on, I don't know, 15 Hertz, positive offset square wave and then you're getting a zapper that's basically what a zapper is and that's just very simple and that works now if you wanted to just get a specific type of zapper off the internet um my friend don croft used to make great ones his wife still sells them unfortunately don croft died in a uh, paragliding accident it's really unfortunate a few years ago and uh, but his wife still puts them out there and that's called they're called terminators like the you know the terminator like arnold schwarzenegger the governator and the uh, Terminator 2 is a good one, relatively inexpensive, 100 bucks maybe on the internet, something like that. And um, it's a fun one to use. So, and it's got two little electrodes. And those two electrodes have got, oh, you have one here. Look, look at this. My Lord, look at this. Okay, this is what it looks like. And uh, where, how, do we have, how do we have one of these? Oh, you have one. Okay. Okay, cool. So anyway, this is what it looks like. And you're going to put, this one doesn't have a battery in it right now. So you're going to pop this off and you put the nine volt battery right there. And you're just going to have this tucked into your pants or something. And it's going to run that current and it'll have, it'll beep up the top up there. And, and that's how you know it's on crazy effective as silly as this is. See, this is the thing about scientism. Scientism has convinced us that everything's much more complex and we need super complex. And we need Dr. Fauci to tell us everything because everything's super complex and no one else understands anything. And it's just that that's all a marketing gimmick. I really, I got to tell you, really in nature, everything's really simple. It's just the simplest frequencies. What's this doing? All is it, all it's doing is 
this switcher in here, it's a 1980 technology. You pop this thing open again. I don't have much nails, so give me a second. This is, geez, I really popped that thing on there. Okay, here we go. Oh. This little switcher right there at the top, you used to buy at Radio Shack. It's called a 555 switcher, 1980 technology. All it's doing is it's putting out a 15 hertz positive offset square wave. What's that mean? It means it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. 15 times per second. So in, see in one second, if we divided it up into 30, it would be on, right? And then off and then on and then off. So it's equally broken up into 30. And that means that half the time it's off and half the time it's on in that second. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. You see what I'm saying? And when it, a square wave means it's totally on and then it's totally off. It's not a sine wave. A sine wave would be like, that's like this electricity that's in this house and every house. It, this that type of electricity sine wave or cosine is actually corrosive but pulsed electromagnetic energy meaning totally on totally off totally on totally off is actually good for you this is such a great subject oh my god that's that's a really important thing to know and i could go on about that for hours i just love that subject but it's something where uh, and let me just give you one last thing and we'll get to the next question is Let's say somebody has an infection on their arm or something. Just put the zapper next to it and watch what happens to that infection. If you don't believe this stuff works, watch what happens to an infection. Like somebody has an infected cut, put the zapper right next to it for 30 minutes and then watch what happens to that infection. You go like, oh, whoa, what? It's one of those. And that's, see, our whole system is designed for selling us drugs and injections where things like this, this little zapper thing, where I put that? This little thing is like, oh, that can't work. That Dr. Fauci didn't say it before. It can't be good. See that eventually you'll find out the truth, but the only way you really can is you have to experiment. And that's why I love experimentation. Thank you so much, David. Uh, up next, we have uh, Yaren. Yaren, go ahead with your question for David Wolf. Hi, David. While you answered the previous uh, person, I tried to find uh, this Terminator online and I have some difficulties. Can you please uh, um, spell the, the name of the company again? You can find it at worldwithoutparasites.com. And that tells you something about zappers. Zappers are known to be antagonistic to parasites. So world without parasites dot com and then and it's terminator 2 just like the movie like terminator 1 and terminator 2 that's how you would type it in and then the inventor of that model this model here that i was just showing you is uh unfortunately you know passed away but great guy don croft and uh, d-o-n and then the last name is c-r-o-f-t and you should be able to track them down and they have other sites than just world without parasites so you should be able to track it down um, and then somebody wrote a, a thing about Hulda Clark. I just saw that pop up. One thing I would say about Hulda Clark, see what Don Croft did is he did something really smart, is he brought the frequency range down to 15 hertz, which means 15 times per second, which is more in the natural range of a human being. Most of the emanations of electricity and energy that are coming off a human being are between zero and 36 hertz. What Hulda Clark was doing was something like, was out like, I, I can't even remember anymore, it was like 42,000 hertz or, 35,000 hertz or something way high. Now, she was still doing square waves, so it was still relatively effective, but it was way too high a frequency. Like, bring it down into the natural range of a human being, and it's going to work better. And that's what Don and I have been really promoting for many years now. And it, you'll find out it works better. That's great, David. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Michelle. Michelle, what's your question? Hi, David. Um, I am just have a question about the mushrooms. So, because um, I do have mushrooms around here and I've been afraid to pick them. So if I, if I pick one off the tree and you can, you're, you're sure in, in North America that they're safe, <laughs> uh, how long can it be stored? How should I store it? And is there anything in the preparation that um, I should do to make sure that it, is, it is food safe, like no listeria or any other, you know, crazy things that we have in our environment today? Okay, great question. What first thing you want to do is let's say you've got this thing coming off of a tree and you're like, okay, let's pick that thing. So you break it off. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take that bottom surface and you're going to expose that to the sun. That's what you're going to do. You're going to dry the mushroom in the sun. 
and make sure it's crispy dried. Like at this level of crispiness, this thing will last years in this. This was just a box for 15 months. We just literally got it out. It's like, whoa, we can still make tea out of it. It's ready to go. So you dry it upside down in the sun. Now, this, see how that surface is? It's called a pore surface, a polypore. If you're really curious and you're like, well, I'm not sure, you know, I know I'm picking this off a tree and David Wolf said so, but I'm still not sure. If it has a pore surface like that, then it's what we call a polypore. And you can always ID it online. You can always just take a picture of it and go, let me just go online and see if I can find out. I'll look at all the polypores in my region and see if I can identify it, which is a great idea. And I recommend that you do that. Um, but the polypores, I, want, I just want to say this, eventually you will realize that the polypores are great allies of humankind. They are close to us. They're close relatives of us. They're part of us. And the relationship we have with Rishi is a deep one. And you can revive that, actually. It's really cool. You can suddenly revive a connection with your environment that our ancestors had. Should you pick all the Rishi that you find? No, I just leave half. Pick half, leave half. Whatever mushroom you're picking, pick half, leave half. Now, ground mushrooms could be deadly toxic, so you've got to be careful. Thanks so much, David. Uh, up next, we have Marsha. <clears throat> Hi, Marsha. What's your question for David Wolf? Hi, David. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question my, uh, regarding my significant other. He's 83 on multiple medications for COPD, arrhythmias, prostate. Can he take the activated charcoal? Would it interfere with his medication? And when would he be able to take it? Great question. Okay. In his case, what you always want to do is separate the medication. I'd say by four hours, that's always the safest bet. And it's better if he takes the charcoal because what's happening is, is that the medications have a lot of derivative side effects and metabolites. And those metabolites can build up and be toxic. Like with thyroid medication, for example, the buildup in people of reverse T3 from taking Synthroid is a big issue. Turns out the char that charcoal neutralizes reverse T3. It absorbs it, or it's really specifically adsorbs it. So you might want to check with your doctor and just get some baseline numbers. on. Th I don't know what medication, you know, side effects and metabolites he's having, you know, and, but there are, and with every medication, there's always a buildup of certain metabolites that build up in the liver. The charcoal is the way of bringing that down so you neutralize the potential of a dangerous liver buildup. And that's usually what happens with medications. Eventually the liver goes like, hey, whoa, 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 I can't handle anymore. When do you do it? Generally, if he's taking medication throughout the day, wait four hours and take it right before bed and then he's cleaned up for the next day. And over time, you might find him getting better and better and better and better because of that cleanup. And I know that from many years of experience of dishing out charcoal to people on thyroid medication and other medications, but so most of the time keeping it away four hours or more and then seeing the improvements and eventually people are like, wait, I'm going to actually get off this thyroid medication. It's fascinating. Actually, we've got people in our group who over the years have gotten off thyroid medication when they were took it, taking it for 20 years. I just want to put that out there. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's possible for everybody, but it is possible for some people. That's Amazing, uh, David, thank you. And up next we have Trevor. Trevor, what's your question for David Wolf? I'm just gonna jump in real quick there, Ben, yes. sorry. Uh, hi, David. Oh, no, there you are, okay. I, I just wanted to say 500 milligram dose of charcoal to start, 500 milligrams, simple, just keep it there for a while. If you wanna do more later down the road after months of use, okay, get to a thousand, go more, but 500 milligrams. Okay, sorry to interrupt, go ahead. Thank you, David, great presentation as always. Um, you mentioned uh, 50 and then, you know, fasting based on your age and many of us have turned 50. So would the one meal a day count um, any time we're not eating? Can we count that as considered fasting for the 50 times that you mentioned because we're only eating one meal? Uh, could that count as far as intermittent fasting? And as far as the charcoal, what about those of us who take supplements like DHA, EPA, uh, vitamin D, how does that interfere with the charcoal and how can we take it if we're taking those other supplements? Thank you, great, David. Great question, geez. Okay, now charcoal does not interfere with like macronutrients like DHA, EPA, magnesium, calcium. Um, your normal protein metabolism. So charcoal, it's really interesting. So then you're going like, wait a second. So it's selective. And the answer is yes, it is selective. 
the, the research on charcoal is unclear. This is crazy. This is one of the most studied substances in human history. Charcoal, it's it, incredible. Tens of thousands of studies on it in history. Nobody's really sure how it works. That's what's so nuts about it. People are like, no, it absorbs things like a sponge. I know how it works. It's like, no, actually it doesn't. It adsorbs, not absorbs. What's the difference? Well, adsorption means that it's electrochemical. So it selects certain things. I generally think it's an electrochemical phenomenon from my perspective. You know, some people say it's Van der Waals forces or pi stacking. If you get into the science of it, it's that it's like they're basically saying it's Van der Waals forces and pie stacking that's really causing charcoal's adsorption. But neither of those are actually the real answer because pie stacking and Van der Waals forces work at only very, very, very small distances. And we know that charcoal will attract to itself. Like if you put open charcoal in your refrigerator, all the gases in that refrigerator will end up in that charcoal. So all the odors, for example. So it's acting at a distance. It's acting at a distance. That's the thing that's unexplainable in the scientific literature. So it's it's an interesting one. Now, you know, how much should you take? Again, 500 milligrams is a good place to start. And is it possible to take charcoal? Like, can you just take it with your like dinner? Yeah, yeah, I do all the time. Um, now, let me say one more thing about that before I let you go is that if you fast 18 hours a day, geez, you're doing good. So, uh, you know, I would stack that into your hours of uh, a scene fasting. But generally for myself, I always consider it every 24 hour period, but that's my own little, my own little prejudice on that one. Thanks so much, David. Up next, we have Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi. Hi, David. I've Hi, been Lori. following you for years, um, but I, I missed the first part of this. I jumped in kind of in the middle, I guess. Um, so, but I was wondering, did you talk about, um, or what are your thoughts about cleanse, like doing a detox through the feet, like foot soaks and, you know, they have foot pads that they have now um, with herbs and things. What do you think about those things? Great. There's a, there's a, um, okay. So I have a long history with this for a lot of years. The actual original product was called the Jing orb. You could look that up. You could like punch that up. Jing orb.com J I N G O R B.com. In fact, you might even see my face on that website. Cause I'm a big promoter of that product or it was in the past when we were doing a lot of trade shows, that was the original foot bath product. Then people came along and kind of knocked it off with like, they're just running an electrical current through the water. And you know, then they're saying that's a foot detox. Maybe it is. I, I'm not going to say it isn't, but the Jing Orb product is much more impressive. And that's one of those post electromagnetic field products. And you, you take the ball that's attached to the, to the console and you throw it in a bathtub with you or you throw it in your foot bath with you or you can put your hands in it or how it just has to go through water and touch your skin in some way and that has a very incredible history that particular product again different from the other foot bath products that the jing orb has a an ability to affect what is called let me see if i can recall this it's called the unfolded protein problem, which is a major issue in cellular biology. I mean, you, you probably never heard that. I mean, I'm, everyone's listening right now going, the unfolded protein problem, what the heck is that? Never heard of that. But if you look into it, it's a massive issue. It's a massive problem. What is it? Well, what happens is, is that when the machinery of the cell is manufacturing proteins, as the cell ages, or let's say it's hit by a virus or something goes wrong with the cell, the actual manufacturing assembly line starts to back up waste. And you have what's called like the folding of the protein gets broken down, the process gets broken down, and the cellular mechanics break up. And then the cell goes, basically, it becomes aged or disturbed or becomes constipated, or the cell starts to die. It's called the unfolded protein problem. And the original technology of the foot bath, that's still available now, is the Jing Orb was the product that actually affected under clinical research the unfolded protein problem. It, it resolves it. So it's really an interesting subject. My God, in fact, a woman who, she's a big part of the Jing Orb group or that team, she actually did a PhD on it, on the unfolded protein problem and that technology and how it affects it. Now, again, that's not true of all foot baths, but that particular one has a property. I, I, I know I could you know, go on for hours about this stuff. There's so many tools out there. You see how, 
how many tools there are and how few we're getting. We go to a doctor's office, they're like, here's a drug, here's an injection, and that's it, get it out the door. It's like, what about all of this technology that's out there that's here now? Miracle stuff. Thank you, David. Up next, I'm going to ask uh, Juliet to unmute. Go ahead, Juliet, when you're ready. Hi, David. Um, Hi. I have SIBO, and a friend told me that if I drink some liquid ozone, that it will help. Where can I, can I just buy a machine and make it myself, or do I need to go to some facility? Some medical? Good question. All right. You, well, the best way to make ozone water is you have to make it yourself. And, um, and that's quite, you know, that's a whole involved thing because you're going to need an oxygen tank and you're going to need an ozone maker, which is basically a tube. What it is, it's a box containing a tube and it runs the oxygen through it and it surrounds the oxygen with electricity. And when the oxygen gets to the other side, it's been actually turned into O3 instead of O2 and O4 and O5 and O6 and more of those. And then you bubble that through water and then you drink that water. Now, that's not that complicated, but to get all the parts and pieces, you really have to get into ozone. Interestingly, last night, a good friend of mine, he's 16 years old now. I've known him since he was six months old, actually. He's got, he just got his own ozone system and he was just making ozone water last night, actually. So he sent me a video of it. He's like, dude, I got a little finally. So if a 16 year old can figure it out, I'm sure you can figure it out and you have to just shop around, but it has to come off an oxygen tank. It can't come out of the air because then you're going to have reactive nitrogen species, which is not good to ingest. So I'm really clear. I got to be real clear with ozone. You never want to use ozone if it's producing ozone from the air because it'll have reactive nitrogen in it. it. Has to come from an oxygen tank. Now I have one upstairs that's in a tank, so I've still got that tank of oxygen, and I can go refill that tank at a welding supply or at the hospital. They'll refill it for me for like. I, I mean, some t one place is 10 bucks, another place is 15 bucks, another place is 20 bucks. It just depends on where you go. Thank you so much, David. Uh, up next, I'm going to ask Carolina to go ahead and unmute, please. Hi, Carolina. Hi there. Hi, David. Um, Hi. So I was wondering, you talked about a, a biomat with jade or amethyst. That's something new to me. Um, I'm wondering if you could just tell me like what that is, how it works, and... Um, um, I'm dealing with an autoimmune condition, multiple sclerosis. What other, you know, recommendations might you have to help with that? Um, and, and, and the supplement for Dr. Uh, Pies, you know, can you tell me more about that, that you were showing that? Sure. Okay. Well, first thing is, is Biomat. I, it's probably biomat.com, B-I-O-M-A-T.com. I'm not sure you'd have, just, somebody can look and do a quick little check on the internet for us here. And uh, that's the amethyst bed. Okay. And it's like an electric blanket. And it's a really like, geez, you know, when I was living in Canada and we come in like cold winters and really intense, we come in and you get on that biomat and it warms you up and you're just, you're asleep and just knocks you out. It's really wonderful. And by the way, I use that. Listen to this. That's how great this company is. I just want to put a little plug in for them because they did something really wonderful for me is I use that biomat literally until the thing disintegrated, you know, cause it has sections of amethyst in it until it disintegrated. I saw them at a show and I was like, I love your product, you know, but mine disintegrated. I'd love to get a new one. They said, we'll send you one. And they sent me one brand new. So that's how cool they are with, with, um, all autoimmune, definitely the dual directional herbs is the way to go. You got to find the ones that really agree with you and that you resonate with. Some people are allergic to mushrooms and can't do reishi mushroom. Um, but they can do other tonic herbs and they can do things that are in that, category the most powerful like tulsi for example is a great one so simple or one of the great ones in chinese medicine excuse me that i really love is he shu wu otherwise known as fo tea um delicious tea fo tea f-o dash t-i is sometimes how it's abbreviated it's a misnomer but you can find it that way tulsi is t-u-l-s-i the holy basil that's another really good one you can find these adaptogens that can work for you but the key i want to bring this up and this is something I had the hard way because I was brainwashed by all the anti-salt books, water and sea salt, water and sea salt, water and sea salt, warm water, lemon and sea salt, warm water, lemon, sea salt, and charcoal. And just drink that, drink that, drink that, drink that consistently until your autoimmune looping calms down. Now I have an autoimmune condition, which is allergies and asthma, right? So I, if I get around and used to, I don't really have it anymore, but 
I would get itchy eyes and I could tell because it would start with the itchy eyes and the itchy ears and step by step by step it'd suddenly be in the back of the throat and be like, oh, it's a pollen, something's going on. If I drink salt water, it neutralizes it. Eventually, I started realizing like, oh, the allergies and asthma is really a dehydration, right, of some type because the water salt is what hydrates you, not one or the other. It has to be both in the right amount for you. Now, for me, I'm going to say one more thing about it which is I eventually had to use an illegal amount of sea salt. It was illegal. All the books said, no, no, you can't do that. And I was like, oh, no, I'm doing it because it stops it. It stops it immediately. It stopped the asthma and allergy immediately within minutes. And I would tell people, I'd say, watch, watch what's going to happen. I'm going to drink two glasses of salt water and it will be done in 10 minutes. And they'd be like, damn, it was done in 10 minutes. So this is the old folk cure for allergies and asthma. Really important, but it's all autoimmune. All autoimmune is really a dehydration, which means water and sea salt together to get hydrated. Thank you so much, David. And up next, we're going to go to Andrew. I'm going to Andrew. I'm going to ask you to unmute for David Wolf. Hi, Andrew. What? Um, Andrew, I see that you're unmuted, but we're not hearing you. Give it one more shot. Are you there? Let's see. I tell you what, Andrew, forgive us, but we're going to, in the interest of time, we're going to keep moving and we're going to go on to now. Francis, I'm going to ask you to unmute, please. Let's hear your question for David Wolf. Let me try that again. Hi, we, hi Francis. Uh, I'd like to ask you on a different line of uh, question. What would you recommend for an elderly person with a fracture and osteoporosis? Great. And also, okay. also about ozone. Uh, can you use an oxygen concentrator to make uh, ozonated water, which is 95% oxygen, instead of uh, going to use a tank? Okay, thank you. Good question. I, I'm always partial to ozone or oxygen tanks, but an oxygen concentrator to bubble through water. The, the problem is, is that you just don't want react. You don't want to ingest reactive oxygen species. And there's always just, you have to really get a readout of how much reactive oxygen is coming through the oxygen concentrator. I don't know. And it's brand specific. So you're going to have to dig into that and find that out. Now, let's say age-related osteoporosis and age-related bone density issues. One thing I will say is vitamin D, big one. Sunshine, big one. So vitamin D and sunshine. Number two, hormones. If you can get your hormones up. Now, I don't know what your age is, but let's say you're like in your 70s or 80s or even 90s. You may want, it's easy to find. And I'm just going to say this because it's easy to find. You can actually use pro progesterone cream. I know that's for women. But at your age, what will happen is you put just a little tiny bit right here one day, put a little bit here one day, and you do that maybe four or five times a month. And your body will convert that progesterone into testosterone. And this is, that happens with a man. You can't do too much of it, obviously, but you can do a little bit. And that will up testosterone, which is really a good way to get better bone density. All this Osteoporosis is ultimately related to three things. One is lowering of hormones. Two is lowering of sunlight. Three is, is we got to get the right nutrients, minerals, and we got to get the pressure on the bone and walking exercise. The minerals that we want and the best thing is horsetail tea. Horsetail tea is a favorite of mine personally, or bamboo silica. Bamboo silica is another favorite, a, a wonderful thing. So bamboo extracts you can find as well. And then that converts into the bone density. You're like, wait, it's, there's no calcium in it though. That's the thing is we, our calcium theory is not the correct theory. The ancient herbal theory works. And I know that I had a years ago, I, I had a gal 83, she broke her wrist. She was an Ann Wigmore disciple and they were like pins, needles, screws. They were going to do a whole number on her. She's like, I'm 83. Come what, what is this? So she's like, she decided she was going to listen to Ann Wigmore. So she went back to the Ann Wigmore books and Ann Wigmore told her drink horsetail tea. Three weeks later, she had motion back in her wrist. And six weeks later, she was basically back to normal. So you have to be very careful in this area because there's really good folk herbal medicine out there. Very cheap. I mean, horsetail tea. I love horsetail tea. It's delicious, actually. And really good for your bones. Great stuff, David. Thank you. And I'm going to uh, ask Rita to unmute now for your question for David Wolf. Hi, Rita. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, okay, thank you, Ben, for bringing me in. 
Uh, David, it is always a learning process. I love it. I uh, just want you to know that when I stop by at the sil uh, Quicksilver Solution and ASAP booth, uh, my friend actually works for, you know, the owner, I forgot his name. I never knew what to do with it. I still had this stuff, but I saw it. You showing that bottle. Is it by the Quicksilver solution that you put the drop in the water and you have and even if you are in the tons of supplement will you still add this thing on or what is the situation there okay well this is the coated silver this is the only over the years i've tried them all i love colloidal silver actually i used to brush my teeth with it and eventually uh, this guy came along dan goya and he's like here you know this is twenty thousand parts per man i was like i thought it was a joke actually. And I kept going, no, it's a joke. This is some kind of scam. But eventually it got, I got into it and I was like, wow, because the concentration, I was like, if you put this on something topically, and I've mentioned this before, and I mentioned that with uh, Dr. Cousins and Dr. Pai, it's miraculous. It's absolutely miraculous. You have chapped lips, put one drop on your hand, go like that, put it on your lips. Next day it's gone. Uh, if you have like a, um, my, my assistant sister cut off the end of her finger, just the end of her finger off, really bloody, really gnarly situation. I showed up later that day. I put the coated silver on every day within three or four days. Usually people forget about it. In that case, she forgot about it. A week later, it was all pink and no problem there. Um, uh, my friend over here in Austin, Texas, Hamza sewed up a friend of mine who had a flap. He really cut a bad cut in his finger here. And he, he, he so they called me from the hospital. And he's like, okay, I'm going to sew this thing back up. But, but Joyous, the guy who actually had the cut, he's saying to put the coated silver directly in underneath the flap. Which you, as a doctor, you don't sew somebody up when they put something underneath the flap and then sew in. I was like, no problems, put it underneath. And he's like, okay, I'm going to try it. But this is not how I'm trained. So he sewed it up. And then by chance, a week later, I was with both of them. And I think I mentioned this in our last call. And uh, and and actually, he comes was like, come over here, Joyous. And he came over and he and he's like let me, let me take those stitches out the stitches came out in a week perfectly healed no problem almost no scar this stuff topically is crazy now i'm just going to just diverge for a second because it's so interesting to me personally why i mean we didn't know that nobody knew that actually it's just things we've kind of discovered along the way because this product's only been out for about three years it's been out longer in industry but for human use it's been only been about three years and um, why is it so important there? What has to do, the skin is an extension of the nervous system and silver affects our nervous system. And one of the reasons why I don't take silver for immunological reasons now at this point, that's not the reason I take it. I take it because it appears for me to sharpen my wit and my nervous system. That's why I personally take it. I'm not, again, I'm not taking it for immunological benefits. I'm, they're there, but it's not the reason. Remember, silver is the most conductive metal in the world. It's it's also antagonistic to lead and lead poisoning. So there's other little things that are going on with silver and skin is an extension of our nervous system. And that's what I suspect is going on. That's why I think it's so effective for skin stuff. David, thank you. And thanks to all of you. We're sorry we can't get to every question, but you've been so incredibly gracious with your time, your expertise, this has really been phenomenal. Uh, everybody, you can see davidwolf.com there on the screen. Great place to find David Wolf. Um, you know, this has just been tremendous to have you here, David. I, I could thank you up and down all day long, but I have a feeling I'm not the only one that wants to do that. Tech team, if you'd uh, unleash the crowd, please. What do you want to say to David Wolf? Thank you. 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 Thank you.